Do it, kill her. Why'd you say that name? <laughs> Do it, kill her. <laughs> I wonder Isn't how it... many times it will take of repeating that line before it stops being funny. I don't know if that will ever happen. It's so good. It's like Kalel No. It is, yeah. It's definitely oh, Kalel No energy. <laughs> oh, God. I love that they re recorded or used a different take of the line. And it was still it bad. Kind of they it knew... was still bad. They knew it was bad. So they replaced it with another bad one. I remember one. seeing people saying, see, even he fixed that. It's like, what do you mean? It was not fixed. Why did they <laughs> it say that? Fixed. It's like, it's even worse in the sense that, um, like, he knew that it, <laughs> he knew that it was bad. So he has no excuse for why it's so bad, you know, again, <laughs> after being replaced. Yeah. Wasn't that the ultimate proof that he sneakily tries to re-edit according to reactions? Like, Yes. That yeah. was infamously a bad take. So it's like, well, as long as I switch it out with another one, as long as you know, even if it's a bad one, as long as it's a different one. Maybe he's trying oh, to be just subtle me about, about the change. If I replace it, it with another bad me. one, people might not really notice. Uh, I mean, I, maybe that maybe there's a thought process behind that that he was like, hmm, yeah, that ma that makes a lot of sense. I think to me, the more fascinating one is, yeah, it was always meant to be four by three, even though I was making a film for like, I was making a superhero film for theatrical release. Yeah, it was always going to be 4 by 3 and then the fact that the stuff that he reshot, the new stuff that he shot for the Snyder Cut was actually framed, like, accurately for 4 by 3 Meanwhile, all of the regular stuff that was for the theatrical release yeah. just had a whole bunch of empty space above the characters' heads, needlessly. How is that not the clearest indication that it was obviously not meant to be 4 by 3 aside from the fact that, did you really think that Warner Brothers was going to release, theatrically, a 4 by 3 black and white, superhero film in what world would that happen a silly one mm. well i mean i guess that's the one we live in because that exists right the justice is gray yeah. <laughs> speaking of zack snyder i forgot to ask y'all did you see the rebel moon extended mega snyder cut is it out yet uh is it out i don't even I know thought it, oh yet. i thought it did come out in between part one and between part two I think that was the plan, but I don't think it happened. I feel like I would have right, heard then. about it if it came out. I so maybe maybe it'll be a six hour oh, long, like, you know, come out and together. You know, it. Rebel Moon, Rebel is Gray edition. Oh, it's, I think I'm gonna see it. I think I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Okay. Wrong with me. Been the best of <laughs> right. You can go and do that. Wish me luck. Good job. You can do it. Thank you. If I, I survive, I'll you. let you know. You'll make it. <laughs> Uh, but yes, welcome to Super Chat Catch Up for EFAP episode Everyone. 270. Oh, wow. Big chungus numbers. Uh, we, we're going we're gonna to check out some of the messages you guys sent us during that stream. Uh, you know, back and forth. Um, I'm sure it'll be quick. Just a couple minutes. Not like that episode yeah, was uh, near 12 hours. It's, not, yeah, it's fine. And we'll just have a little chat. So we begin with fun fact. It was I, gay actor Michael Douglas, that left the Bear vs. Tiger super chat. I was Mr. Dark 279 at the time with a troll face Ray PFP. Wow. Interesting. Curious if true. Yes, because you could. Uh, that could all still be lies. As in, like, you could, could just be. go and look at those things and then claim them to be true. Can you trust I, um... an actor? I wonder. So I think the, the conclusion from that conversation is that if the. Tiger managed to get the jump on the bear, then it stands a chance. But if it if it fails, then the bear probably wins, right? I think, I think so, it yeah. kind of ended up going to the bear in the sense of just probability. Yeah, like you know, I I guess I guess I considered the conditions to be meaningful in terms of uh, recognizing that a tiger does have a shot, as long as it's you know you just drop him in like a jungle or something, and then uh. And then let him go from there. Yeah. Uh, the author of the excellent story, Baraska, impressed Flanagan so much that he hired her to help write Hill House, Bly, and Usher. Check out Baraska. Hmm. That's interesting. It That's is interesting because those are the three that we like the most out of the selection. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can Fringles. It's cool that you just write something and the director finds it and really likes it, and then you end up, you know, working on this big production. Okay. And it turns to be really good. Production too. Uh, can Fringles do my taxes too? If he's gonna skip EFAP to do them. No. <laughs> well, there's your answer. Glad EFAP, we try to avoid giving tax advice. 
or doing people's taxes or doing people's taxes yeah uh glad to see Kretosis, host of the number one furry podcast on youtube finally join efap oh this is the number one furry podcast on youtube it's this one efap two of the three of us i'm uh, a dog frankie's a bird you're yeah. a cryptid you snuck that one in. Thought you could get it by I've me. I've always been a dog. No, the bird thing. Feeding misinformation to the audience. It's rude. Rags, you're a misinformer. How does it feel? I'm That's not right. a misinformer. I'm a Mr. Former. Mr. and Mrs. Mis Informer. They're just they're, they're crime doers together, those two. You could have said that I was a misanthrope. I was, was thinking like a, that, yeah, yeah, I was thinking that. But why? But the opportunity yeah. passed. Because it'd be like ironic, because I'm a dog. Oh, but it's, I'm more related to the information part. Oh, I don't. We, That's the more I don't do information. Part of the word. I know that was the point. You don't do information because you lied about this being a, the number That's one right, furry podcast. No, we are the number one furry podcast. That's not a lie. That's just that's just a description of reality. Mm. I'm going to have to check with yeah, our science team on that one. one. Arguably, all of us are furries. I think it's strong. Um, it kind of, kind of you know, ruins the whole category, doesn't it? If just, it just yeah, sounds like it's I pretty easy so. to get into this club. It's not a club. <laughs> it's a terrible cult. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm inclined to agree. So, uh, Baraska is a very well-written horror story and has well-produced radio drama visions that have several TV actors leading, uh, lending their talent. Neat. Interesting. Yeah. Baraska. Uh, I can't believe you watched the Orlando Bloom Three Musketeers and not the Tim Curry one. Yeah, we keep you all on your toes with that. I mean, there's probably happen? a good amount of Three Musketeers movies. Oh, there's a shit ton, I feel, yeah. you know. Yeah, of course. Um... Sargon of a cad, more like Sargon my dick. Oof. Fucking god. I don't know if that works quite is... as well as you wanted it to as wordplay. They're trying though, you know? No, I tried, but I, you know, I don't know. I feel like that doesn't even, you know how there's like hard rhymes and soft rhymes? Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like that doesn't even meet the threshold of a soft rhyme equivalent of wordplay. True. Um, one of my favorite gay animated movies from my childhood is an American tale, Five, Bible, Five Old Grows Bible, Bible Goes West. Oh, they've changed have it you ever, to something uh, else. Have you seen Five Old Goes West? I have not. It's a, it's a neat movie. Right, cool. I like Five Old Goes West. Does he, does he, does he go west in there, in that movie? He does. He's, they start off in Russia. They move to America and then go out west. Uh, nice. Oh, um, it was I think it was the first voice actor performance for John Cleese. He oh. plays the villain in that movie, uh, Cat Erwall. Hey, I get it. And I think Don DeLuise is the. Oh, he's the he's the cat. He's another cat character. And then there was Wiley Burp. Who is this, like this old dog? And I forget. Oh, who does Wiley Burp's voice? I gotta look it up now. VA. Um, Jimmy Stewart. Ah. It's it's a fun movie. It's a fun movie. They go out west. There's some songs. They sing. There is a you know stuff happens. Mm -hmm. I believe you. Uh, watch the drama on Patrician and Kratos' respective videos. Can't we just get good writing, Bethesda? Speaking of nope. writing, Dumbo's play DDLC. This is going to be an interesting set of uh, things to read after the Fallout show came out, too, isn't it? Interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I saw. Uh, did you know that Chinese people name their children by throwing pots and pans down the stairs and noting the sounds that are made? You know? They named their kids, hey, what are you doing? And stop throwing those pans. Yeah, you fucked those up my pans. Chi those aren't Chinese names. I just, I those just are don't just, think you should do that to possibly Those are anyway. just declarations of disapproval from exactly. your neighbors. Yeah. Hey, what are you doing? That's just oh, your right. name. I don't even work. It's 3 a.m. tomorrow. 
Uh, Rags, all my exes live in Texas. What should I do now? Um, you know, Texas is I a big mean, place. Whatever you want, like, oh, really. Yeah. That shouldn't really affect what your next stage is, because most people's exes probably live in a state. But even right. if it was, you know, you were mentioning yeah. it's a big state, but I mean, even if it was like Rhode Island, it probably shouldn't change anything about your life, right? Yeah, all my exes live in Rhode Island. Yeah, you should be We're fine. We're all on the road to Rhode Island. That's the best Road 2 episode. That's the first, but the best. Hmm. Um, I don't know which one I would put as next on that list. Um, the multiverse one was fun. Do you remember that one? Uh, it's been a while, so have to... yeah, they they were going to a whole bunch of different worlds, and and they even included like animation styles. So there was like a Disney world, there was a robot chicken world. Did they go to um, their past? Is that that episode, or is there a different one? No, no, no. That was back to the pilot. That was the one where they go back to the yeah to the first episode, and then there's like paradoxes and stuff that get created. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, Kretosis on EFAP, the third biggest Fallout fan. That means Muller is ready for the Fallout show. Uh, yeah. uh, please cool it with a sin slash win faps. The level of autism on display might attract predators. That's what those faps are for. That's where the hyper autism is welcomed and charged up. Oh, well, well, we have big debates about whether or not Pinocchio was able to lie through song. Or whether, that, that means whether or not that gives them a point, two points, half a point, yeah. or double yeah, point. Or yes. whether, yeah, what's the nature of like deception and how that factors into his lying and stuff. Like These that. were all incredibly important discussions. I think That's so. That were interesting. Really... I never thought like that was a completely new kind of conversation to me. That and specific it was... conversation. Yeah, it just goes to Cinema Sins is capable of making us think sometimes. <laughs> yeah, he has like uh, observations. Yeah, Not Cinema I'm Wins though. Concerned. Not like, Cinema, Cinema Wins. Sins. Cinema Wins is retarded, Cinema but Cinema Sins, <laughs> Sins intermittently is interesting. Cinema Sins, yeah, he occasionally comes in with something that's I was so I was so disappointed. Like I figured that that was going to be so easy for Cinema Wins. That was crazy. Yeah. He just it's unironically one of the most disappointing episodes. Puss in Boots. Yeah, that's all that can be concluded, is he, he didn't find the He didn't want to make it. He did not want to make that yeah. video. But everybody was telling him that he needed to, and he figured, like, yeah, I would. And surely that should be the clearest example of, like, your positivity means nothing, like, if it's not if it's not even earnest. Why, why would I care that you made, like, a positive video? Oh, you know, it's good, it's, good to, it's good to talk about the things we like, but you don't seem to like it that much at all. Like, sure, I guess you were, you to the know, point where... seemingly... He went and found a, uh, you know, 10 things you missed about Pussy Boots. Yes, yeah. Wish. Clearly, and those, yeah, were the, those comprised a significant number of the points that he got. I just can't believe that, like, his final part, you know, where he recaps the film was really short because he just didn't have anything to add. Nope. What I find really interesting about that, in a sad, depressing sort of way, is that you're a channel that's dedicated yourself to you know, this optimistic outlook on film and how great films are and what they could bring and just the, finding the good in cinema. And then a totally banger movie like Puss in Boots, The Last Wish comes out and you'd like begrudgingly make a video on it. Yeah, it's, just, yeah. it's, it's your pointless. thing. Well, even if, it, if it's not his thing, that's fine. Um, just don't make videos like talking about how much you like it when it's clear that you don't have much to say for it at all. It's really lame. One of our pieces um, of advice it, is don't just don't talk about it if you don't care. Fine. Yeah, if you don't care, that's totally yeah. fine. Don't make a video saying that you think it's really good when it's clear that you don't have anything to say other than basically observations that are just like categorical of, hey, look at that, that's neat. Hey, look at that, that aligns with this number here. Hey, look, Death's there sitting in the shadow. It's like, yep, those are all just little factoids, not meaningful observations about the storytelling, which is so fascinating when like, Cinema, cinema sense is not is not good at criticism, but he does sometimes actually do like you know constructed he's very scattershot multi level yeah it, yeah he's unreliable. But sometimes he'll just come in with like a developed thought, like it's it's beyond just oh I noticed that and that doesn't make sense. It's like sometimes he'll actually come in with something that's um got more elements to it uh, by way of an argument than just hey look that's silly. Yeah, his brain is working, just not always. No, well, it's just, it's just, you know, there, there's other objectives telling jokes, and then, oh, well, sometimes when they're inaccurate, that's a meme, <laughs> which is annoying. Sometimes he uh, pulls out the satire defense, yeah, you know? It's, it's the, yeah, it's the donkey defense. Yeah, it's, it's just donkey. 
I do find that funny, the idea that, like, as soon as- there's no such thing as good or bad satire, all satire is good satire. Yeah, that's the big weird thing about it. I think it's because, it's like, you took it seriously where it's satire. It's like, I fucking want satire to be good. Mm-hmm. And to some degree, satire is to be taken seriously in the sense that it's making observations about the world that you agree with. Yeah. Uh... Also, wish me luck flying on a Boeing 737 MAX tomorrow. Mm. All right. Uh, good luck. Hope it went well. You, you shouldn't need luck. It's the safest way to travel, but... I it's safer than it's walking. Because, like, isn't, it, isn't it to do with, like, stuff going on with Boeing, right? Like, the Boeing's been getting in trouble for, like, safety problems or something on their plane. I'm not very familiar with... That's I've what I'm guessing. I've heard some stuff kind of like that. I wonder if there's truth to it, or if it's just, like, a social media thing. Well, yeah, I have no idea. Thing. Not, not really familiar with the situation at all. No love for Persian or British short hair cats? Um, oh, well, I mean, there, there's a lot of cool cat breeds. Oh, right, because he, that's right, because Cinema Wins was talking like tabbies are the best cats, like, no exceptions, no. Which is so weird, I feel like there's, there's such an immense variety of, like, cat coats and colors and things that are really cool. Yeah. My Black favorite. cats and neat. Long form makers together, you crazy bastards. Hello, Rags. Hello, Wolf. Hello, Patrician. Hi. Yeah, I, I mean, he didn't say hi to me or Fringy, so. All right, that's fine. Mm. Well, okay. Mm. The Bread Circus is another long man. He did a very heavily edited 12 hour video on Phantom Menace. It's good stuff. Funny, too. Alrighty. Always welcome more long folk into YouTube. Mm. It feels like there's just so much less uh, stigma against the long now, which is nice. No. You know, civil rights, that's what we call, that's what we push forward on, on YouTube. And, uh, I'm just proud of us, proud of everybody. Uh, Y'all ever heard of my girl A.S. Summer? A.S. Summer? No. No. I don't think I've heard of her. Or him. It. Uh, Creature. Tabo is when Down's kid misspells something on the computer. A Tabo? Alrighty. I don't get it. And then the next thing it says, look up Nathan from South Park. Oh, well, yeah, that's the, with the glasses. He's the... <laughs> the Mimsy one? Shut up, Mimsy! Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you call a car with an alarming amount of spoilers on it? An alarming amount of spoilers? Like, more than one? Mm -hmm. I feel like um, more than one is pretty alarming, right? It's not often you get a car with one. No, and it's, it's not even, even rarer one. that you get one with two. Normally, one is you know, one. Normally, it's one and done. I don't know what I would call it other than probably not a good idea. <laughs> Makes you go too fast. You'll go go out of control. Right. No, it, not it, even the speediest of speed it, uh, demons dare to put it, a second it, one on them. It springs to life and it starts yelling out spoilers for movies. Mm. So as a car drives past, it just yells out, "Darth Vader is Luke Skywalker." Rose wants the sled. No, no. Well, their answer is a spoiler alert, is what you would call oh. an alarming amount of spoilers okay. on a car. I oh, all right. Mm. Uh, alert. I, I, spoiler uh, alert. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I get it actually. <laughs> An alert. Smile and nod, boys. Smile and nod. Uh, do 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 do. I've seen several videos of domesticated foxes. They often grin, do a lot of squeaking. And demand lots of scratches. Uh, I think that there are, yeah, that like that. Um, there are some degree of domestication for foxes, but like that, it's not, you know, like not significant. Yeah, it's not common, but there's some out there. Yeah, they're pretty cool yeah. animals. But yeah, makes sense. Yeah, foxes are neat. Um, it's a shame that they're very destructive to our local ecosystems here in Australia. But I think foxes are neat. Only yeah, we could ask them to stop doing that, you know. Yeah, yeah be fine. well, I mean, how, I mean, what's that? How can, how can they? They got it. They, they got to eat. You know, yeah, we can they, get them they, stuff not, to eat not... that doesn't involve destroying the ecosystem. We can sort that out. You need DoorDash, right? Got... That's yeah, a yeah, thing yeah. going around what, now. What, what, what DoorDash or Fox Dead? Oh, thank you for uh, what do you what do you brought me? Oh, it's just I don't know, rabbit like rabbit stew. Oh, thanks, appreciate yeah. it. Not bad at all. Oh no, a trolley is heading toward Hitler. You can pull the lever and the trolley will hit someone who has a 50% chance of committing worse atrocities. What do you do? 
Um, <laughs> probably nothing, right? I guess, it, yeah, there's not... The worst case scenario could happen no matter what you do. You know, like, it's almost beyond you at that point, right? Yeah, like, at least we know what happens as a result of World War II. Like, bad stuff happens, but at least we know that things ultimately do turn out okay. You know, yeah, Europe is, is the, is the suggestion that the person and... that we save there would definitely do an atrocity, though it might be chiller, but it might be worse. Like, they're definitely doing one. Or is it like there's a 50% chance of zero, you know, zero uh, war crimes? Um, or a really, or, really bad or one. A very, yeah, yeah. Even, even worse. I assume it's that. Otherwise, the question would be pointless. It would just be saying, do you want a free risk of something worse happening? In which case, I would say... That's no. pretty much what we were thinking was going to be. Is like, I just don't want to risk doing something even worse. That's insane. So, uh, there you go. And the, the, someone just said, hello, my fellows. Oh, hi there. Hello. Uh, hi, everyone. I was just wondering how one submits their memes for you all to enjoy. But anyways, guys, loving the content. Keep up the great work. Oh, thanks very much. Yeah. Uh, in the Discord. That's the main place that I collect up the memes. I do spot some on the Reddit or the Discord here and there. Uh... But, uh, you know, it's, it's not, that's, that's about as far as it goes. It's, uh, I'm up to a lot of stuff every day, so I don't manage to catch everything, but I do try. You can always give it another repost after a certain amount of time if you feel like it's, um, it's one of them good memes. You, you know, you can often have the community uh, interested in us seeing whatever it may be, so you know, we try to get around to it. So, yeah, that's probably the best way to do it. Uh, you guys should get Soul Gaming Inc. on. Soul Gaming Inc. Inc. I don't know who He's, that is. Uh, incorporated. Yeah, nice. That's impressive. Um, there's been lol cow fap, so can we get one on DSP? Um, I don't know much about DSP, honestly. I don't, I don't know. know. I I don't know. I mean, if there was a documentary from uh Mike uh about like um DSP that got insights into his life. <laughs> Like, you know, directly. That would be kind of tempting. There would be DSP documentaries out there. It's just... Oh, sure, but, but um... Uh, yeah, hmm. I mean, I know more about Boogie's lore than, uh, than DSP's. Same. That's kind of why the Boogie one was very going to be easy for us to do, because we, we know... Well, especially when you've got some of us who are very familiar with the Boogie lore, and then uh, poor unfortunate souls like he are learning about it for the very <laughs> <Yeah>. first time. <laughs> Just too funny. Uh, it would be entertaining to react to his lore. Gundam would be an ideal guest for... Oh, if I did it, we, we'd definitely have uh, a Gundam on. Gundam is a DSP historian for sure. Also, hi, Rex. Hey there. Jafrilis Productions has ranked Succession Season 4 as his number one favorite TV show of 2023. That's no correct. way. Okay. Those people liked it, Rags. It's okay. Wow. But they're wrong. All right. Dude, that was it such... ruins, like, oh, the whole man, show. That was, so, that was so intensely upsetting. That yeah. was demoralizing. So, so just deteriorate before our very eyes. I was so... The amount of investment I had, like, at the ending of season two, holy shit. It we, was we so binged, high. We binge Succession. We would was yeah, watching, we, we watching. Yeah, we did it. We like, were super like into it Succession. A we were hooked in from the first few episodes, yeah. yeah. Well, absolutely. We were super transfixed by that show. And then, like, yeah. first, second season are amazing. Third season was good. It felt uh, like treading water. The, yeah, yeah. It was, but it was still good, you know? Yeah. And then the fourth season was just like, what a, like... What happened? I don't even... Yeah, it is like <laughs> what happened. It was, like, from the first episode, it was like a catastrophe. And it kept getting worse and worse. It's like a completely different team... Oh, so disappointing. Was doing the show now. Uh, so it much ruined stupid our shit. investment and everything. All the characters the getting fucked up. Yeah. Well, I think it was just a case of like, damn, I guess like what what I thought the show was and what you guys thought the show was going to be was like not what they intended yeah. uh, at all, seemingly. Um, and I, I, don't know, I know like someone can make arguments for, well, yeah, but I, I mean, there's a point that could be made there, but I don't know, man. The story, to me, it seems fairly obvious that it was meant to be that Kendall becomes his father. Like, that that's, that's like, the direction that the story takes. He completely changes and becomes his father, rather than they all get into That was the point of episode one, as he end. realized he was yeah. not ruthless enough yet. Was exactly. It? Especially with the season two finale. Like, surely that was the beginning of, of that. Having his the, dad the smile at the notion that his son is, yeah. like... 
done a huge That's major actually, controversial yeah. move yeah oh such a great ending the subtle just the slow subtle change in his expression from like a frown to this this like very contented grin yeah, because that like, show was so good at one point. Holy fuck! It really was. It was funny how much we were just like, "Let's go, uh, blast through it." Logan, Logan, uh, do we do we care about spoilers? <laughs> I, I, I mean, like, I still like the first three episodes are still worth watching, or the three seasons are first they're uh, worth watching. The, the problem is but that, it, like, if you're if you're enjoying the show, by the time that the season two finale ends, you're going to be in the exact same position as us. Is I can't stop here. I have to know what happens next. I gotta keep going. And then, unfortunately, um, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Going. It's tough to recommend, knowing that it's basically like Game of Thrones. Oh, season I, I eight. can't recommend it. I can't. Um, I, I, I can't rewatch it. Like I just, I can't do oh, it. Yeah, I have no way. intention of rewatching that show. Unfortunately, just, uh, it's too, like... it's fucking shame is what it is. Mm-hmm. But those people loved it, and that's wonderful. I'm sure. That's okay. Yeah. You know. Good for them. Uh. Anyway, <laughs> you could tell there's trauma there. By the way, there is trauma. <laughs> that was traumatizing. It's like yeah. watching. It's like watching your your smart, intelligent, um, like successful and motivated daughter go to college, get a degree, and then all of a sudden gets into like a, a crippling methamphetamine addiction. And like gets to running in with the wrong crowd, she meets a guy that ruins her life. Like it's it it really is traumatizing to something to watch something that you love just crash and burn. <laughs> hey, massives! Uh... Thoughts on Goodwill Hunting? I watched it recently and completely adore it. Sean's monologue is great. Also, play Little Nightmares. Oh, Goodwill Hunting is a great movie. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh... It's not your fault. That's an amazing. That's an amazing scene. Yeah, there's a reason why was, it's uh, memed and referenced everywhere. And that, that was that was uh cuz that was Ben Affleck and uh and and Matt Damon wrote the screenplay for it, right? Yes, I believe so. Which is um yeah, like goddamn. And they were quite young as well at the time when they did that. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Robin Williams, of course. <laughs> Excellent as per yeah. usual. Uh, wow. I knew watching Patrician complain about Starfield for 8 hours would come in handy someday. <laughs> in and of itself, an enjoyable time. Starfield's just been deleted from culture, isn't it? Uh, it was, yeah, uh, it, was, it was a lot yeah, riding on it from Microsoft's perspective, and it, it just, like, completely... It feels like Baldur's Gate 3 existing and being what it was was uh, very detrimental to Starfield. Yeah. They just released a little update for it uh, very mm. recently. I think this week it's just got some little changes and quality of life improvements mini maps things like that but yeah no one talks about starfield other than dismissively or kind of negatively just gone like that um Pretty much. like anthem is... remember anthem everyone oh my god oh fuck oh. anthem is anthem is so forgotten mm -hmm. that when you said that i thought you were referencing the iron rand novel <laughs> oh yeah see that I, then i was like oh shit oh yeah the vi the massive video the game that EA published. Bioware video game bioware has not made a video game since anthem and that came out five years ago they're still working on dragon age 4 and that new mass effect game they've been working on they're... dragon age 4 for three decades now what the they've fuck been is working going on, on so long and there's like very it's, little to show for it i don't think there's even it's gonna like be terrible gameplay trailer there's no way if you've been I don't, working I don't on it well if, if you've been working on a game that long like i know it sounds weird but like surely it's going to be terrible if you've been working on it that long you think i think uh, the forever. reality is that generally when when a game's it's like there's a certain it's it you know it's almost like a bell curve right there's like a an amount of development time that you start you start to hit a point where it's like okay now now we're getting really really good this is a this is about as much time as, as is needed and not enough time to make sure that it actually gets out and is completed. No, like, and then, and then it's like, it starts to deteriorate because the longer time goes on, it's like, ah, you're going back and forth. You can't figure out what this game is going to be. There's something going wrong that's making it to where it's taking you so long. I think, I think the big one is that, um, I don't think they've shown anything for that game except for like concept art, like concept trailers and like, early like pre-alpha gameplay 
Um, like there, there's not, there's no like, I don't think there's even a single just here's a gameplay trailer, here's you know, the like first level, normal, or here's, here's the tutorial, or here's yeah, or here's even a demo, mission. you know, like the yeah, even like the Watch Dogs demo, Vertical Slice, like yeah, there was a lot that. Now look, right? I still feel sad about that, <laughs> but um, but like at least it was something you could look at, you know. The game came out like a couple of years later, so. Whereas in this case, it's that and Mass Effect, which I think they announced that Mass Effect game like three or four years ago as well. I uh, I would say that you should be very worried about whether or not Bioware is going to make it. It's one of those zombie studios. It just keeps shambling forwards. Well, yeah, you got to remember Bungie, it's, been, you know? it's been 17 years since Mass Effect 1. 17 years. Still one of my favorite games. But that studio's dead, right? There was a zombie. That studio doesn't so, exist anymore. Yeah. It's just a name on a building. Mm-hmm. Weird. Anyway, I adore the chaos <laughs> in the Lord of the Rings extended trilogy EFAP movies. My favorite part was Rags forgetting that he's bisexual. Glad to have Wolf I back. did not forget that. I'm did afraid, I? I'm afraid there was a part, yeah, where you... It was some reference to, like, a thing being... I think it was, like, members who were, who were currently gay or something like that, and then... You were like, why am I being left out? And then people reminded you you were bi. Well, it, I'm, it, it's, uh, I'm just conjoined whatever. I can just straddle the line. I can hop on this side, hop on that side. There's a very versatile. I see. Yeah. Beautiful, really. It is a thing of beauty. Uh, very handy. Listening to you guys talk about Lord of the Rings is the only thing that brings me joy in life. Aragorn is my favorite. Take my money. Love you guys. Well... I am glad we've gotten that kind of a discussion out about Lord of the Rings, because uh, it's uh, it, there's no like meme of you know you say it's good, but you haven't really talked about it. It's like no, we have well, for a oh, while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've got two watches of it on YouTube of the trilogy. One's more memey than the others. The other's a bit more a bit more serious, uh, but both of them offer a really fun experience, I think, and. We have learned to appreciate those movies more and more over time. Yeah. Started watching Buffy. Anything I should know? Where should I stop watching? Oh, wait, that's a different question. So, anything you should know before watching Buffy? Uh, it's going to take you a while before you'll see stuff that makes you go, Oh, that's, that's really worth seeing. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a different amount for everybody. But if you want to access the golden... Juicy syrup, the best it has to offer. You do have to get literally right to the end. The uh, final episode of the twelve-season run of Buffy and Angel is what we consider it's, to be the best one. Yeah, the best one, definitely. Um, and not just the best of that show, but one of the best things in media. That that episode, it's. it's oh, I love it. Pretty good. So, um, yeah, you know, if, if, if and, and not to say that there's not many, 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 many highlights along the way. I would say that uh, season one has like one highlight, season two has a handful, and then season three is pretty good. So that's when it starts to get pretty good. Yeah, it's um, it's just a matter of how long you think you can hold on. But uh, I do recommend it to pretty much everybody. But if it's not your thing, no problem. Uh, the next question was, where should I stop watching The Simpsons? Uh, I don't know. The movie feels like a a potential line, but really the line is when it stops being particularly funny yeah like there's a score it reaches early on that sets a big old skill ceiling and i think mm -hmm. once you go below half of that per episode that's when you should be like oh well i think i, I could spend yeah, my time better much. other places there we are actually, other shows um, that will start to deliver you you know closer to what you're getting in golden age simpsons in terms of the amount of laughs we actually watched a new episode and it was quite horrible Yes, it was so surreal just hearing all of their much older voices, way worse comedic timing, worse way less writing, worse joke. animation, yeah. and just sad. Yeah, it is. It's like kind of watching a zombie. Let it go. <laughs> just let, mm -hmm. leave it be. But uh, that is not its fate. You do wonder if, God forbid, da Dan Castellaneta was to die that they would consider ending it, but probably not, right? I think uh, it seems like it's it, they can just keep it going, and that they're happy to keep it going. Like it's it's. I mean, worth how it. how long until um, AI voices for animation? Oh no! I mean, that's got to be realistic. Like they got Vader's AI voice now, right? Oh shit! Yeah, 
you know, it's, um, it's not nice to think about, Hell but man, the the cost saved on that one, holy shit, you know? Especially if it's a brand new show and they're all animated voices. Sorry, uh, mm. AI voices. Uh, that's going to be a fun world to live in. Uh, what order should I watch Mike Flanagan's show in? Shows in technically any order you can go in. Any order you want, because they yeah. are not connected to each other. As long but as I Midnight mean, Mass is last, if at all. Oof. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess chronological order. I mean, that's what we did. Um, that's you don't lose anything doing it. Yeah, that Yeah, there's way. not really any kind of like, oh, you should definitely do it this way because then you get this. There's there's nothing like that. So just, just mix and match no, I... or go. Release order is the only real like thing to cling on to if there's anything. Mm -hmm. You can watch it in a way of what looks like him making decisions based on the previous one, maybe. Um, yeah. It does feel like House of Usher was an example of him committing to the ending versus uh, uh, Hill House, where he absolutely didn't. Bly Manor, where he did, but it's bittersweet. And then Midnight Mass, where like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you can just compare and contrast as you go, sort of thing, but... Yeah. Oi, Patrician, where is the fucking Attack on Titan video? You promised. It's been a while since manga finished and now anime is done. Worst story in history of storytelling deserves to be dissected. Ooh. I forget. What's the controversy with Attack on Titan? Is it that the manga ended horribly? I don't know. Don't know anything about it. Well, suppose, uh, maybe he will make a video on that. Behold my awesome milestone. Behold! It is beheld. Pretty much. I still well, can't watch done. Godzilla Minus One because of distribution rights in my country. I don't know when I'll be able to watch it. It's annoying. Oh. Yeah, that's a damn shame. I love Godzilla Minus One. It's really, very good. That's, that's a good example of a film that just fucking had a cultural stomp, didn't it? Like... You will know what I am. <laughs> You're not going to forget me. Everyone knows what Godzilla Minus What is. Kind of cool. Good old Godzilla. Um, would love to see EFAP cover Blue Eye Samurai. I don't think either of you guys have seen that, right? I have not seen it. I think I saw one episode. I wasn't too taken with it. Um, and I just, like, not enough recommendations for me to want to push through as opposed to other stuff, so. Probably not going to happen, but I hear it is a good one. Clever Mula restarted so I can thumb up twice. Did we do that? I can't remember. Oh, I think it did break in between the middle, didn't it? I can't remember. I think something happened on that stream. I can't remember either. Hello, Mubeslayer. Your videos have inspired me to make a retrospective of TLJ. Also, when will the TFA series be finished? Who knows? Who can say? There is no answer. None whatsoever. But hopefully it will be finished at some point. There we are. And uh, best of luck with your videos, sir. Is it weird that Bucky only gets shot in the metal arm instead of anywhere else in Civil War? Getting some serious Mando vibes there. If I remember correctly, he's putting the arm in the way of where they're shooting, right? So like, um, which, which part would I be thinking about here, though? So, Bucky gets shot out in his apartment... Uh, in Germany, oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, right, yeah. And then there's the helicopter, I think, that misses a lot of the shots. But other than that, I'm trying to think of any time the LC shot at. Yeah, because I'm I I don't remember it being nearly as frequent an occurrence as it was in Mando. No, and it's not as silly as in Mando, right? Where it's... and also he's a super soldier with super duper reflexes, whereas Mando is just a guy. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing that's working in Bucky's favor. Well, and Bucky moves his armor in the way while uh, Mando, one of his most famous ones, is he's just waddling forward and none of them shoot him in anything that's uh, open. And there's also that Bucky's arm comprises a larger portion that would be, like, blocking him because Mando's is, like, little plates. So even if he holds up his arm, it's like, well, yeah, I mean, if it's your forearm, sure, but, like, your elbow and, like, the underarm, and, and th there's, like, way more portions that are exposed compared to an entirely metal arm. Yeah, I think it's probably fair to say that if Bucky sees someone aiming a gun at him, then he knows probably the the larger portion of where they're going to aim to shoot, which is, like, a head and heart, something like that. And, and the yeah, arm covers most true. of that. Mm -hmm. Um, For all finger typers out there, keyber lads. Wait, what? What do y'all type with? I think they mean the uh, pecking typing. 
Oh, star. yeah, with the one finger typers in like, yeah. yeah. I remember I about to learn of... an entire new way of the world. <laughs> 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 feet type it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't knock it till you try. <laughs> Great games are played, not made. Reminds me of fight with feet, not hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, funny. Some oh, of these quotes... that was on. Oh wait, no, that was a thing in Willow. Remember, the 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 key to winning a sword fight is it's your footwork. It's not about your skill with a sword. It's about uh, your feet. Also, well, what I was about to say was like a lot of these quotes. If they're from a context that's much better, like they will mean much more. It's kind of funny how that works. Is yeah, but that's not even surprising, is it? Right? When like, you hear someone sense. who's terrible at their job say games are played, not made, you're just sitting there like, what the fuck are you talking about? But when it's someone but if, who's like, really Jerry good, Yamato said games are played, not made. You'd be like, okay, tell me more. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Let me because like, you know that made. there'll be like Surely. a rationale behind it that makes sense. Yeah. There's some, well, there's some sense, wisdom you here. You make good yeah. games, so there's got to be something. There's got to be some truth to uh, the statement and a meaning behind it. Like the biggest steel man defense I could make for great games are played, not made, would be that at the end of the day, you have to play test the game because the concepts on paper don't necessarily, even even if a concept on paper sounds cool, like that doesn't necessarily tell you how it feels, which is a very, uh, you know, I I don't like the word visceral. It doesn't feel like the right word, but it's um you know, real, tangible. That'd be like my steel man argument for what that means, that quote. But on the space, it just sounds silly because of course they're made. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> they don't make themselves. I just like, they're just like, you dumb them. shit, of course they're made. <laughs> like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, <laughs> okay, jeez. I'll just try to say something insightful. Then you failed. And you failed. Uh, do you, you, you see some black guy called Lifter Devil a chud for liking Rorschach because he talks to himself and eats beans? Why does this keep happening? Rorschach's just like Starship Troopers, the whole, like, you're not supposed to like him, he's a bad person, and it's like, yeah, but who can't like a character who's willing to die for his principles? That shit is like, uh, especially the principle of the truth needs to get out there. Like, you're familiar, I assume, both of you with Rorschach's sort of ending. Sort of, a little bit. Um... And he's like, uh, he's a bit punishery. And it's like, yeah. is it any shock why people get drawn to characters like that? It's like, you're not. He smells though. He's smelly in the in the in his character. He's got. He doesn't wash. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I mean, there are worse things. But uh, yeah, I guess you're a you're a chud if you like Rorschach. Let's be honest. He has one of the coolest masks in all of superheroes. Mm. And the amount of meaning you can draw out of it. Holy shit. And. The fact that this conversation, one person looks at Rorschach and sees something, and then another person says, you're seeing it wrong. Is that not, like, yeah, the height of irony? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All this reminds me is that you should look into Noodle's Why Games Are Too Big. He used clips like Ackman's Out of Context to support a lie. It's sad. Why Games Are Too Big. Uh, is it like the argument that games, like, open worlds, or that if they have to add too much content, that, like, that detracts from the experience, that kind of thing? I don't know. I feel like th those kinds of things, again, it always feels like, well, it's not that they're too big, it's that the content's bad, right? Like, that's always going to be the observation. Nobody would say that the, you know, Rockstar's open world games are too big when they offer, like, a hundred hours of, you know, mainline story content in the case of something like Red Dead Redemption 2, plus all of the side activities. But th that's the difference between that and the kind of, like, the Ubisoft open world game formula, right? Mm. Of, oh, uh, yeah. It's never a bad game where I go... Active. If only there was more, you know? It's it's the good games that keep giving me more and more and more and more stuff. I'm like, yes, this is excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. More. You're never being unhappy. Rags is hugely handsome. Mm. Oh, thank you. Uh, how about an arc covering Pixar post-Golden Age? Mm. Mm. It's less <laughs> tempting than Golden Age. Yeah, yeah, less tempting than Golden Age? Uh, my curiosity for the ones I missed is mild. Mild is good. But, yeah, there's yeah. only a few that I, uh, I like Coco. That feels like one I should see. Any of us see like Soul? No. I didn't. I did like Coco, though. I saw that. Uh, isn't Chungus Lee a Street Fighter character? Chungus Lee? <laughs> <laughs> Chungus Lee. Mm. Definitely. <laughs> Chungus Lee. <laughs> uh... 
Never Knows Best has really mastered the weak, condescending, fragile narrator voice. It hurts to listen to that shit. Oh, yeah. yeah you the... feel like you'd meet him in real life and he would just, like, crumple over. Yeah. Like a soggy paper bag. To cheer everyone up, please have Fringy read the koala copypasta in full. Also, hi, Rags. Hi. I've not heard of this. Well, I mean, if you want to look at it, look at what it is and then consider it, if, if you want, I can uh, keep reading while you... Maybe have a look-see. Um, we had no design document, man. Emil Baginus. Baginius. The design document discourse throughout that EFAP. It was extensive. Uh, more people have seen Joseph Anderson's Fallout video than the average person has listened to in their whole life. Oh, wasn't that a quote from Joseph Anderson? What was yeah, the more exactly yeah, something like it was something I think like he said that. more people Sunlight have listened Go. to my Fallout video than the average person has been listened to in their whole life. Oh yes, I do remember that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Calm down. Shut up, Joe. <laughs> uh, I watched Silo thanks to you guys. I love it. I only wish. Um, I, th I think I can say this. As I said, I only wish Juliet wasn't immune to fall damage, and those flashbacks in three and four felt unnecessary. I tend to agree on flashbacks. Um, as for fall damage, I'm trying to remember what you'd be referring to. The I think garbage I know. shoot. Oh, yeah, 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 100%. We noticed that as well. Um, but, hey, glad you enjoyed it. Oh, um, yeah. Really excited for season two. Someone sent something in another language, I think. Goya uh, Sebada Cree and Pat Pa Efap Ijim Pabra and Smiley Face. I'm sure that's Totally uh, wholesome and congratulatory. Thank you very much. Had a great day of ice fishing for Walleye while listening to you, King's Long Live EFAP. Well, thank you very much. Um, is there a rock band called Evil Retard? It probably is. Probably. They, they sound cool. For I want to listen to them. I want to listen to Evil Retard. I want to see Evil <laughs> Retard's live. Normally, we just watch them on EFAP, but uh, it'd be really nice if we got to see them live and in concert. Um, don't sell Jack Saint attacks in short. They were pretty slimy and disingenuous with their video. Remember, um, I oh, was yeah. pretty impressed. That's the thing. Whenever we come across like a new slime, it it kind of does in retrospect. It's like older slimes feel less bad, but it is worth remembering. New I remember slime, um, new slime. the amount of lies, man. Like that's what they do. The whole strategy, which is weird because I think Sliders, they just, you know? they don't expect people to um, compare and contrast like the clips that they show versus. The clips in originality. It was just like you're gonna you're gonna struggle with this if you're not careful. Um. Hey, hence hence our whole thing of watching it all in once. You can't even say that's a thing that happened. That's right. We don't even give ourselves the opportunity to take people out of context because nope. we watch the whole video, even the ads and the sponsors. Yeah, and we try to advise on making ads better in future because some of them are yes. cringe. Uh, been going through Movie Bob's Twitter, that noose is looking better every day. And the amount of times the word people is in quotes is disturbing. It is weird. It's yeah, a little, he's... um, it's a little concerning. You before, know? He's I'm glad he's unelectable. The, yeah, one of the few people in the world is like, thank goodness he'll have no power ever because he would not use it wisely. To Pretty say much. the least. Hello, lads. I just caught up with... EFAP 268, good stuff, then started 269. The change in quality of media, uh, being Puss in Boots, The Last Wish versus Echo, was precipitous. Hi, Rags. Hello. And yeah. And yeah, I, I what, mean, a, what an incredible uh, uh, change in quality. Pretty rough. No. Echo, uh, that's, that's another one that's just going to get forgotten entirely, isn't it? Oh, if yeah, it, it already is. It, it was like... 17 minutes after it came out. Yeah, we, we had to rush for getting that one out because everyone was like, wait, what is this? And it's like, yeah, I know, I know. Just bear with us, we'll explain it. Uh, iterative process is the secret of Mario's jump. I don't know that we're ever going to know what the secret is, but maybe. Mm. Uh. Jumped in on apparently the second stream, an hour in, and one of the first things I hear from the covered video is, sorry for the long intro. Oh boy, this is going to be a fun EFAP. Also, hi, Rags. Hi. That's why I was, the one I was talking about, uh, Theo would be dead, because the Never Knows Best guy did, like, every single trope 
possible of um, like horrible video essay. Though he did surprise us and adds to the bingo card of um, oversharing about his relationship with a video game at the end. It was uh, a little strange. <laughs> very special, you know. Good for you. Good for him. Uh, Nostalgia Critic says laughter is a coping mechanism to deal with pain. Therefore, comedy without some form of misery is a contradiction. That one's on you, I feel. I mean, um, like, if that's how he sees comedy, then... Comedy? I don't know, man. I guess that's how he does it. But I just, I just don't agree. I definitely don't think... Comedy is a method some people use of dealing with pain and trauma. But that isn't at all necessarily what it is. A lot of the times, you could be having a great time, and then you just find more and more funny things because of your attitude, you know? Just that, like, that feels like you're reducing the scope of comedy. It's like, surely not all of comedy. I've heard the idea that comedy is always at the expense of someone. But... It's not... Yeah, it's just Even then... True. Um... Someone... Like, couldn't... What about just the nature of, like, I don't know... Uh, if you saw a tiny little rock... Uh, rolling across the floor, because it's a slight slant, as a result of an avalanche. And, like, we see it slowly getting toward a stream, and then, like, maybe it just comes away slowly, almost back toward a stream. No, not again. And slowly, and it finally plops into the stream, and it's all like, yeah, and then a giant boulder just lands on it. And, like, are you actually going to say that the reason it's funny is the misery of the person that is the rock or something? You know what I mean? Like, I guess at that point, is it extended to the point of us... Uh, anthropomorphizing every object in relation to any funny event that can ever take place. We've got to find misery in it. I feel like it's a bit... It just feels like it's uh, scaled it so hard down that there's there's a lot of options that are being removed for uh, what can be funny. And does the person have to feel like they were experiencing misery in order for it to be funny? Mm. I feel like, uh, is who's having, who's getting the misery when you do wordplay? Yeah, exactly. Is it, like, I don't know, I don't know, some guy, like, who creates dictionaries going, that's not what those words mean. They shouldn't be arranged in that way. I'm sad now. <laughs> you've ruined language. You've ruined, yeah, you've ruined English. To me, it feels like some yeah, form of an intuitive statement, but the one that doesn't work, the more you dig. Yeah, I, I feel like it's even something I've probably said before, that comedy is always at the expense of something or someone. Um, but I'm not even sure that's true, yeah, when you think about it. I love long-form videos. Listening to super in-detail while going about my day is my jam. Hey. You know, a lot of people like that. It's a good mm. company, you know? It's a big old story, in a way. Especially if it's about something you care about. I was half expecting and would have welcomed the whole Ahsoka video being episodes of other TV shows, only to end with, Ahsoka did this too, it sucked. You know, it's funny, uh, I think I mentioned there was gonna be a third, it was from Bly Manor, but I decided that the video had gone on too long without uh, getting to Star Wars. It was a fucking good decision, because so many people got mad at me for having just two episodes analyzed before Star Wars. Where's my <laughs> fucking Star Wars videos? Jeez. Like, oh, <laughs> Of course, uh, I agree with the notion because the point would be made much better if uh, you just show how many different shows succeeded where this one failed. Um, but yeah, it was a fun video to make. Playing video games as a kid with friends who didn't try to start a game of Halo multiplayer and waiting for them to be ready, screaming, press the green skittle. Does that sound mm -hmm. familiar to you guys? Green skittle? Probably the A button, right? The A button? Yeah, that's what I was wondering myself. I feel like I've never heard anyone refer to it as a green skittle, but fair enough. Because you're a real gamer. <laughs> Is that how you tell? You say that in front of other people and they go, Haha, yeah, 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 and then you're like, you're yeah, fake. Oh, yeah, the green circle. Ah, <laughs> yes. Fake. Uh, how will DD account for Fisk agreeing, oh, so Daredevil account for Fisk agreeing to stay in prison and keep Matt's identity as long as Matt doesn't implicate Vanessa's involvement with Nadim. Um, I don't think you should expect them to continue much of anything. They're probably going to set a new status quo. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen, to be honest with you. 
they'll, I feel like maybe because of the fact they've got these people involved that they will demand that it, it, you know, suitably continues from the end of the uh, three seasons. Mm. But I don't know. We'll have to find out. Judging BSG games for the story is like criticizing a Tesla because it can't off-road. No one cares. You just play BSG games for the sandbox, which they do better than anyone until Starfield fail. Mm, definitely disagree. Uh, yeah, I disagree. Yeah, definitely that's, disagree that's, on a lot of like, that. Just to be clear, Skyrim say, is a no. bad game. Oh, shit. Like, like, I think that Skyrim is probably... I think... you. I just don't... It's just probably a bad game uh, in terms of there's the mechanics and the writing and the questing and the story and the balance and the stuff like that. It's just... Well, I, I just find that crazy, the idea of, like, well, hey, they make really good sandboxes, so, like, why should you care for or expect a story? How does that account for the existence of something like uh, New Vegas that has all of the same sandbox elements? There's that. People there's... find very interesting. Also, let's just pretend they had a thousand games with shit stories and then they made one that was good. You're going to hate that? You're going to rate yeah. it badly? Well, I mean, how, how do you lose anything if it's all of the same mechanics, but it has a story that you find interesting? Exactly. How does that not contribute to a world that you find really interesting to explore if all of the factions in it have interesting things to say? have interesting conflicts with each other, if there's a whole bunch of history that you can glean from the environment that also feeds into the dialogue that characters have. How do you lose anything by that? It doesn't even detract from... How does it detract from any of the elements of the game that, you know, the rest of the development team is working on if the lines that are written by the writer are interesting? How, how, how do you lose anything from that? I also disagree that like their games are sandboxes because they're not sandboxes if anything you're moving from run one roller coaster to the next roller coaster uh to the point where it's very conspicuous a lot of the times that once you enter a town once you enter a village once you enter a house that's when everything everyone starts talking and the event happens and mm -hmm. it's the bethesda roller coaster it's not a sandbox you're going from roller coaster to roller coaster attraction to attraction um yeah and the like way the that zelda everything is interconnected is very poor sandbox like, you can do so much in the Zelda games, and, like, it's all a bunch of systems that are designed to allow you to, uh, have fun. And, uh, and on your own terms, you know? And, you know, they're the ones that chose to tell a story. Yeah. If you want to just not they, tell a story, yeah. then go ahead, but why tell they one that's shit? They could have been super skint on the narrative. They could have a super, super subtle, um, more lore or back story element to the game but no they're trying to tell these grandiose stories with a cast of characters and all these themes of this that and the other thing the problem is they're just really shitty at it they're just really oh, bad at doing like, that. If, if it's an accepted opinion that like yeah the stories have always been bad and everybody agrees with that then you gotta get that memo to all of the game journals who like praise these games for having good stories or at least yeah and all the fucking the customers game. who do Fallout 3 got praised for its story and meaningful choices Yep. That didn't say, like, yeah, it has a terrible story that doesn't make you think and is really dumb, but hey, it's a fun sandbox. Well, n nobody's making their reviews saying, thank goodness it has a shitty, dumb story, because that's what we wanted. Yeah, that's, that's dumb, and you know it's dumb, yeah. but you're in denial. <laughs> <laughs> I love, yeah, being unable to, like, be invested in anything that's happening or anyone I talk to. That's so awesome. I feel the same way if, like, uh, you know, like, the the games from, what they're called, uh, uh, Supermassive Games, the ones that do, yeah. you know, like, Little Hope, if someone said, like, they've never had good gameplay, it's like, why, why would, <laughs> like, what, what's, like, I can't <laughs> I'm criticize. I'm not here for good gameplay, I'm here for a bad story. But <laughs> well, if your boss told you, <laughs> yeah, if your boss told you, but, well, I've never given you a raise. Well, there you go. Yeah. I've never let you have bathroom breaks, so why would you why would you ask now? Yeah. Maybe it's time for change. Mm hmm Never thought I'd see Stag and EFAP crossover on this year's bingo card, but damn, this is good. Glad you enjoy. Uh Good day. I have plans to make factions in my Lego TTWG, some examples being video game series and movie series. Cool. Alright, yeah, go for it. Uh, also, I ask you, do I have permission to make you guys playable characters? Cheers. I am all very much fine with that. Mm -hmm. Rags, are you fine with that? Um, yeah. Just write us well. 
<laughs> don't settle for having a shitty story. <laughs> Even if you've always had shitty stories, don't do it. Uh, you can't alter the narrative of a game slash story that's already written. The paths are already set. This is why generative AI is going to be revolutionary in gaming because player input will change story. If it's done well, I'm not I sure might what they be mean interested in seeing how it is. You can't like alter the AI the can like look into the changes and stuff that you do, and it's not going to necessarily be stuff that's already pre-made. It'll be stuff that changes based off what you do. It, it's almost like having a like a like a game master there in a sense. Oh, they talking about like true freedom in in games where like your choices will, you know, it has to fall into one of maybe four or whatever, as opposed to the true infinite where you can just do anything. Yeah, and it's like if that's done really well. And a lot of thought goes into, you know, potentials, then, you know, I'd be interested to see that. But, you know, yeah. it kind of depends, you know, on the, on the human input and that kind of, you know, creative element. I don't think anyone minds the fact that games have a limited amount of options to, you know, give players, as long as they cover, like, a selection of, you know, uh, what, was the, what was the image uh, for you that, that we were looking at where it was like a fallout? It was like, yes, yes, please, yes, that's totally fine, or <laughs> no, or oh, no, God, but yeah. okay. And it's like, no, these I'm are all yes. No, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, like, meaningfully different, even people, I think, are fine to settle for um, good and evil, if that's, if that's all you got. But obviously prefer more than that. Mm -hmm. Um. It's just about, it's really not about the amount of options versus the quality of the options. No, pretty, I mean, yeah, pretty much. Like, I remember um, Black Ops 2 had, like, a branching storyline that branched meaningfully and significantly, and it wasn't like it branched too much. Like, it, it's, it's not that there was, you know, kind of like an infinite number of ways that things could go, but there were meaningful differences between the endings to where it felt like more of a branching, divergent story where your input mattered compared to you know, Mass Effect, where for all of the changes that could happen, it all still led to the same place, with the same binary choice at the end. Um, I genuinely think this is the most malicious bad actor y'all have covered since Quinton, and at least Quinton was smarter than this. It's hard to remember. It'd be like we need to jump back in time to us post those streams and then compare notes. Like, did your guy do this? Like, yeah, did your guy do this? Like, no, no, I didn't go that Plus, far. Plus, we've like, kind of oh, wow. changed a bit, too, so... Yeah. You know, now that we have a new reference, and how shitty people can be. I played and enjoyed Bethesda games. I still recognize all the flaws and wish they were more complex and better written. Uh, it's a damn shame, although this man is insane. Yeah, I think that's the rational take. I enjoy them, but I wish they were better. That's the normal person thing to say. Uh, hopefully this is... Individual takes time to actually attempt to learn from the response here. He clearly lacks experience, uh, seems to have been sheltered, and had his ego fostered. Grow up, please. Gentlemen, have a wonderful day. Well, thank you. Uh, that is uh, something that can happen. We have seen it happen. But most commonly, and I, uh, I have to imagine this is somewhat human nature, when you see a bunch of people saying you're wrong on a long stream, you're just like, ah, I hate them. They're the worst. They're evil. Fuck them. Alrighty, that's what you, that's what you watch. Uh, but I, I don't know. I, I don't know if you would have taken the uh, the ending particularly well because we were we were laughing quite a bit. Uh, it's hard not to. You know? <laughs> Let me pitch you a TV show. Specifically, Movie Bob and Boogie are housemates in this story, and they have to deal with other YouTubers entangling in their daily lives. So Boogie and Movie Bob are larger than life and have to go into the city to achieve some revenge spree. After their money-making scam gets revealed and they go on the run while seeking a way out of the mess. Uh, if the budget is there, they could even have another group of YouTubers trying to help them and get them to make the right choices and a guest appearance by a few real-life celebrities who want in. Buddy, buddy investigatory show or the, them like thieves trying to make, make, make ends meet. I, I, could, I could see it being pretty entertaining. You'd have to get actors to play them, though. <laughs> I think Boogie would do it, but I don't think Movie Bob would. Boogie's desperate enough to where he would, yeah, because mm -hmm. he doesn't have any like real sense of shame. He'll just do whatever he can for <laughs> notoriety or money. He wasn't installed with that, Rex. I think they forgot. It's one of the drivers he's missing. This is Todd Howard, a man who needs no introduction. But in case you haven't heard of him, here's a detailed description of who he is. To quote God from Monty Python, get on with it. Yeah, it does feel that yes, way. Yes, get on with it. 
Cosby was a Me Too witch hunt. Indeed, poor Cosby. I don't know about that. I have, I have not looked into it. Not going to claim one way or the other. All I know is that there's heavy investigation and press happening. Was, uh, is there a, not a result of like a fair trial that's been done? I'd yeah, assume. I'm, I'm not familiar with the story at all. I'm going to use my one anime recommendation ticket to suggest Mob Psycho 100. Same creator as One Punch Man, same studio as FMA Brotherhood. Uh, it's a completed show, less than 40 episodes, unconventional style, but wonderful animation and themes about uh, OP ESP -a child and his con man mentor. Mob Psycho 100 has been recommended many times. Yeah. Maybe I'll check it out. Not that one punch man creator, wasn't it? Apparently, yeah. Hmm. Hi, EFAP, Kretosis, and Patrician TV. Catching up at 1.5 speed after missing the start is great. Thanks for the long form content. No problem. Design documents are not outdated. That's like saying outliers are outdated for stories. It could be a semantic outliers. thing, fundamentally, in terms of outlines, I think they mean, right? Like, uh, oh. It could just be like design docs in a particular format are no longer... We went over this in the stream a million times, how yeah. a comprehensive well, core... Like, well, it's wikis now, not like a piece of paper document. Yeah, like a shared design thing between the team to... I mean, you gotta yeah. have something that unifies the project. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, how does anybody know what they're meant to be doing? Okay, I just rewatched the bit you skipped at two times speed. I misremembered there being a graph. Sorry about that. Here's five bucks for me being dumb. No problem, no problem. I'm not surprised a studio that has no consistent direction with their new game skips a crucial step in outlining its game. Fallout 3 was the last one. Makes sense, since that was the last consistent game. Hmm. I can't say. I never played 4. Or 76. Imagine I wanted to bake a cake. Instead of following recipe and making changes, I throw everything in the oven and work backwards when eating it. Work backwards when eating it. I'm not sure what no. that looks like, but alright. Oh, hmm. no. Interesting. So it starts as poo, or what? <laughs> oh, no. Still can't believe my eyes. All my favorite YouTubers in one place. E. Hope you had fun. Finally, an EFAP of respectable length. I'd be curious when they actually said that, because uh, we, just, we just kept on going with that one. Our favorite fairy made it to real EFAP. Hi, Rags. Hey. Always happy to be a uh, guest in here on EFAP. Mm -hmm. Always thankful for the opportunity. Share my oh. opinions to all these cool guys. These wacky guys. I woke up with a hangover. Send poorly worded super chat. Went to sleep again. Woke up, got mildly drunk, and stream is still going with no surprise of mine. Wait a couple of hours for another incomprehensible super chat. Sure. <laughs> if that's what you wanted to do, alrighty. Thank you very much. Hi, Rags. Have you, hey. ha any of you, played Far Cry Primal? If so, thoughts? If not, I recommend. It's neat. I have I not played it. it. I thought about giving it a shot. I never played it, no. Yeah, I've heard about it, but I didn't play it myself. <laughs> uh, just because someone has a strong opinion does not mean that they are right. It just means that they are very loud. It still needs to be scrutinized. Oh, yeah, sure. 100%. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have a way of actually defending Emil, so he instead just whines to reject people criticizing him. Can't fight in a duel, just cry and whine that your opponent shouldn't get to use a sword. It is a strategy. Uh, he doesn't have a... Oh, wait, yeah. Uh, do you like jazz, little friendless orphan boy? <laughs> little friendless <laughs> orphan boy. I assume they're talking about Nevado's Beth. <laughs> Uh, who's ready for Never Knows Best to make a schizo video on this stream like in a month? I am. Just let me die now. What a terrible person. I have no idea if he responded to it. We haven't, uh... He might have tweeted or something. Probably. For your information, in the Bad Video Games video by Never Knows Best, he says that Lord of Ring Gollum is mid. <laughs> uh... Well, that's all we need to know, isn't it? If that's mid... <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Uh, the uh, the figures just arrived, and I'm extremely impressed with the high quality. Also, also, play the Bungie Halo games, Mubler. I shall, at some point. That is the plan. Being a cuckold is shut up and get out. I'm going to have sex with your wife now. Hmm. That's the way to put it. Oh my god, we found someone to out-cuck metal. Never knows best is the true cuckoid. He's definitely making a video <laughs> on this stream. Laugh my ass off. 
I mean, I think I think he thinks it's like really mean to have <laughs> laughed at that story, but like I don't understand how you could do anything else. I mean, really, the funny part was that that got omitted. You know, it's just presenting like, oh yeah, Patricia called him a cock, and that's that's like kind of it. It's like, huh? I wonder but why. why? You said that. <laughs> and then you find out. It's like, huh? I think I know why you might have got that. You got cut by a video game. The cuck in his own analogy. <laughs> <laughs> Very strange. And he's upset somebody else recognized it. You know? Yeah. Mm. So. My life to live. Quote, I needed people to know I was a cuck. Never knows best. Well, I mean, you know, he made sure that it was a fun adventure, too. He makes it so that you have to go find out. You have to do some clicking and typing to get it. When I first made the cuck meme, I ended up feeling bad slash regretting it because it was too inflammatory. But then as more and more was dug up and more autistic it became funnier, sir, a second cuck allegation has hit the channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the memes are funny with that one. YouTuber Veilfisk makes bad games for his friends. I don't know what that means, but all right. I don't know who that is, yeah. Uh, if the steak I ordered is given to me half-cooked, I don't care that the chef has had a rough day. I send the steak back. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I wonder if Never Knows Best would agree with the opposite take. Oh, you think this game is good? Do you know how little effort they put in? I bet that would be considered a bad take. That is kind of funny as a reverse, isn't it? You yeah. Can't, you can't say this is good. Point. They didn't spend very long on it. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, alright, I guess so. Do, do, do. Those weren't cookies, they were actually concept art for Starfield's planets. I see. The Empire is never more alive than when we sleep. No sleeping. JK, great stream, lads. Get some rest, you massives. Uh, get rags, high rags on Stargrift, please. Well, it's kind of over. <laughs> but, like, sure. That would have been, uh,. That would have been fun. Uh, we can get you on the, the Ghost of Stargrift episode or something. The Ghost of Stargrift. Ooh. But that was the last uh, message, by the way. Oh, oh all right. Episode Fair. 270. Done and dusted. Thank you so much, all of you, for sending any messages. We very much appreciate it. And for now, Indeed. we're going to say goodbye. Cheerio, folks. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.